Have you ever wondered how to import AutoCAD file into 3ds Max? If so, you are in the right place. However, importing the file is only the start. In this video, I will show you the whole setup for modeling with blueprints imported from AutoCAD and share with you a very useful trick that will make your work easier. Let's go! Here is my design drawing opened in AutoCAD. It didn't have any walls dimensions on the plan, so I added one to double check the import precision later. I go to File, Import, Import, and here's my AutoCAD drawing to import. I click on it, I get the import window. 3ds Max should recognize the incoming drawing units. As you can see, the incoming file units are centimeters, so the drawing unit in AutoCAD is set to centimeters. So here's the setting in AutoCAD. In my case, the system units of my scene are also set to centimeters, so there is nothing to rescale here. But if there is a unit mismatch, you can click rescale and 3ds Max will rescale CAD drawing to your system units. 3ds Max will import the AutoCAD drawing as editable spline or several editable splines. Here I have the option derive AutoCAD primitives by. I can choose here the rules for interpreting different AutoCAD drawing characteristics when it's imported to 3ds Max. For example, if lines with different colors should be imported as separate splines. Let's quickly import the drawing as it is to see what we get. As you can see, all these lines had one color and layer in AutoCAD, so they imported as one spline. Also notice that my text is missing the numbers and letters didn't import, and this is known problem in importing AutoCAD drawings. The simplest solution is to go to AutoCAD drawing and explode the characters to lines. I select the whole drawing and go to Express Tools, Modify Text and click Explode. Now all the annotations look like that, they are lines. Now I will import the drawing again with settings which suit me better. From the list I will choose one object, so the whole drawing will be imported as one editable spline. Also make sure that the hatches are unticked. These are the lines which are used to show materials on construction drawings like concrete, but they won't be needed for modeling and they can slow down the viewport. I can also weld the duplicate vertices here. In this case I need to input a very small threshold, so only obvious mistakes or overlapping vertices will be welded. If I input too big of a threshold, some separate vertices which are a feature of the drawing can be welded. I won't use this option because it can slightly move the vertices when welding them. I prefer to work with the drawing as I got it from the client. If something is wrong, I can fix it manually or ask for a correction or updated drawing. Now I will check the layers settings. And as you can see on the layers, I can choose which ones I want to import. For example, I know that I don't need the people layer. Sometimes the AutoCAD drawing may import with hidden layer. Let's do something about it. As you can see here, the axis layer is hidden. But as long as you import the drawing as one object, it will import as a part of the whole spline. In other case, you'll need to either unhide it in AutoCAD or unhide it in 3ds Max after importing the drawing. But clicking unhide all is a good idea anyway to see if some trash didn't import. I don't need the axis, but I will import it anyway to show you what happens. I leave other options untouched, including spline rendering. The drawing imported, but I can see it. On the layer editor you can see that it is set as invisible. This is because Max imported the zero layer and the first layer which is Axis. And Axis was set as invisible. I make it visible and here is my drawing. It got imported as a VisBlock object. Here I can unpack different layers from it as separate splines, but I will convert it to a single editable spline. And I have my annotations here. In previous versions of AutoCAD and 3ds Max, imported drawings had a tendency to land somewhere far away from the center of coordinate system. So if it happens to you, check with the grid and move it close to the center. You will avoid problems with working in viewports and precision in modeling. In theory, 3ds Max should rescale everything automatically, but sometimes an error can occur between AutoCAD and 3ds Max, so it's better to be safe than sorry. I left one long dimension on the drawing to make sure that the CAD file got imported and rescaled properly. 
the length of this element is the same as on the annotation, so it imported correct. It's important to use the longest dimension of the drawing, because if you make a little mistake, like a centimeter on the length of 50 meters wall, it's not really going to make the size of the model wrong. If you made that 1 cm error on a wall that is 12 cm thick and scale the drawing based on that measurement, it would be a considerable mistake. Also, in general, in architectural drawings, the longest dimensions like spacing between construction axes or mine walls should be correct. Though, there may be errors on the minor features of the design. They are changed very often and sometimes the dimensions taken from the drawing don't match the dimensions in annotations. Sometimes the drawing can import with vertices placed on different heights on z-axis. It's very easy to fix. I will select the whole spline and scale it to zero in z-axis. And I click reset scale to avoid problems with editing gizmos. Now let's create separate planes for every view. In editable spline I go to spline level and detach every view and section. And I select them and click on center the pivot for everyone to manipulate them easier. When I had a much slower GPU card, the process of detaching editable splines was very long. I basically had to wait for computer lags. It can also happen if your drawing is very big and has a lot of layers and annotations. In this case you will need to group the drawings in AutoCAD, for example by placing them on separate layers or using different colors for different views or sections. And in 3ds Max you can import them as separate splines based on colors or layers. Ok, so I aligned the drawings, I placed the plans down below so I can snap to them with 2.5 snap. I will turn on snap to grid option in snaps and I will move the sections and views so the zero level of the design will match the zero level in 3ds Max coordinate system. So here I have a box and now I take these vertices and I type height in absolute value and it's at the right height. No need for adding or subtracting numbers. I'm placing all drawings on according layers. I'll place the views in some distance from the plans and at the end some useful tricks that will make your work easier. I would like to hide the drawings which stand in the way of the background references. I cannot use backface cool on splines so I will use viewport clipping option. Here I can regulate at what distance the object will be hidden. So for example if I'm looking from here and I want to see these views as blueprints for modeling in the background, the viewport clipping will hide these two ones. And now I can just turn the layers on and off so I can work with section or elevation. I will change the mesh colors so I can see if I'm working on elevation layer or section layer. And I will turn on freeze option so I won't move the blueprints by accident and turn off show frozen in grey. And the whole setup is ready. I can choose different views, switch between elevations, and all data from the drawing matches the 3ds Max coordinate system. If you found this video useful, take the subscribe button to a dinner with candles and who knows, maybe something big will happen. If you have any questions, please ask them in comments, I'll be happy to answer. See you in the next one.